Hi, I'm Melissa Zosky, and I'm your host for today's Shining Mentor Magazine cover edition interview. And this week we're interviewing Lana Schlafer. She is a master speaker, master coach, and creator of Master Your Life Academy and the 21 Day Ease Course. Through her courses, guided meditations, mastermind programs, Lana's helped literally thousands of clients go from managing their life to mastering it. That sounds really good to me, doesn't it to you? Lana resides in Southern California with her three beautiful children and her husband. And you can learn more about her at lanaschlafer.com. At the end, you'll get a link. You'll be able to see a link to her free guided meditation that she's generously offered us today. Anyway, here we go. Can't wait to talk to her. Hey, Lana, thanks so much for being here with Shining Mentor Magazine. I'm so excited to have you here. And, you know, I really appreciate you being on the cover. You've been somebody I've appreciated and followed for so long. And this is very exciting for us. Well, as I say, thank you for leading me. There are no followers, right? We're leaders yeah. among leaders. So I appreciate you and I appreciate being here. Oh, thank you. You know, we talked earlier about celebration and how um, by celebrating, you open yourself up to receiving and having better success in your business and life. And I really love that topic. I love how you really dive deep into that. And I think so often that we overlook celebrating those things in our life. And I'm really getting excited about how you can help our readers and listeners really grasp that so they can have more fullness in their own lives. Can you talk about that a little bit more? Right, right. Yes, I love the topic of celebration. And I feel like we have it really backwards in our society. Yeah. We think that we have to, for example, receive love to feel loved. We have to be successful to feel successful. We have to have the outer result that somebody outside of our control a lot of times delivers or, you know, we can't control how many clients sign up for something or how many books we sell or how many people say I love you to us that day. But we are at the mercy of life do, giving something to us until we can feel it. And that is the, the basis of the law of attraction is that you're just going to keep getting what you're currently living unless you inwardly shift what you are currently experiencing and then life will reflect it back to you. So celebration to me is appreciation and action. It's taking your gratitude practice outside of your 10 things I'm grateful for today and actually living it and putting your action where your mouth is, where your thoughts are, and in some way adding these elements into your life on a daily basis mm -hmm. so that there's a pre-celebration, there's a during celebration and an after celebration. And I feel like pre-celebration is what people call visioning, right? Where they yeah. sort of allow themselves, to, but I think there's a difference between calling it a visioning practice and a pre-celebration because mm -hmm. I'm thinking I'm imagining myself already celebrating that thing I'm experiencing. I'm not just imagining the journey to it. I'm already signing books. I'm already tearing up as the participants in my programs are telling me how it's changed their lives. I'm already in that state of celebration. And by the time it fills me up to such a degree that everything that I create, that everything that I speak comes from that place, I almost don't care about the result. So as I'm in the process of actually receiving whatever results I receive, I'm celebrating um, having the experience, whatever is, is, is. So in other words, I'm not celebrating the success of the outer success. I'm celebrating that I get to enjoy this experience and be present. And I'm open to any gifts that it brings. And sometimes the failures or the mistakes bring more to celebrate, bring more clarity, bring more portals into self-love, bring more insights, bring more opportunities yes. than I um, could have received from getting the expected results. And then the post celebration is really the integration piece. And again, um, there is a, a quote that I remember reading from Kobe Bryant. He won his first championship and a reporter said, how do you feel? You just won your first um, championship. And he says, awesome. I can't wait for the next one. Like he didn't even pause wow. for a moment. 
to like receive it. And in our society, we associate that drive and that passion and that hunger with like always wanting more, more, more. But I believe that you can have the drive without um, needing to take away from the beautiful receiving of what you've already created, of what you've already here. I've known so many entrepreneurs to create an amazing offering Mm -hmm. and maybe they only got half the people they wanted to sign up. So here they are spending weeks moping around and feeling miserable instead of Mm -hmm. celebrating the people that have signed up. Right. Talk about a perspective shift. And that perspective shift will not only have a huge impact on how you feel in your daily life, one will be a life of feeling undeserving, un- satisfied, unaccomplished, miserable in some way. The other one feeling proud of yourself, feeling grateful for what's happening in your life and feeling open to the opportunities. But it'll also have a huge impact on everybody around you, the program participants, the opportunities that flow into your life. I mean, it is a complete system. We have a complete toolkit in our life to be able to live from a place of gratitude not just in rote mechanic way, but what I call in celebration. And yeah. life will mirror it back to us so yes. that a simple interview that we're having could feel like a celebration and you bring that energy to it and life reflects it back to you. 100%, I totally agree. You know, and you were saying earlier before we started the recording something about how people wait until everything, they wait till the end to celebrate instead of celebrating along the way. It's like, it reminds me of people you know, they have these great businesses, but they never pause to celebrate the moment right now. And then you hear about people that finally retire and then (laughs) they die a couple weeks later. It's not going to happen to me. (laughs) Right. It's almost like we wait for that big bang to celebrate. We we want the big, you know, accomplishment, the big success. And so many people spend 99% of their days, 99% of their life waiting for this thing that by the time they get there, honestly, they have not had any practice appreciating and celebrating. So how great are they going to be at celebrating when they get there? They're going to be the Kobe Bryant. That's all they've practiced is looking forward to the next thing. So they are always actually Kobe Bryant's a great example because notoriously he was got a short temper. He was miserable. He was an amazing player. But the last few years, my husband's into basketball, so I know very little, (laughs) but what he tells me, is he's had this whole transformation. He started doing meditation and mindfulness practices. He's now retired while he could still be beating that horse to the ground, but he retired because he was able to pause and intuitively feel into what's most exciting and fulfilling and inspiring to him now. He retired at the peak of his game. He, I mean, there's so many examples that we see, if you look, Mm -hmm. um, of outer success, not necessarily guaranteeing a feeling of success. Right. But what do most people think? Oh, if I had a million dollars, I will feel like this. If I had this partner, I will feel like that. If I, mm-hmm. if, if, if then, if then, yeah. they're constantly putting off their happiness till something outside of them happens, which they frankly have no control over. Well, I got to tell you, I have a perfect example in my Master Life Academy. One woman actually did manifest 1.25 million. It was mostly wow. in assets, but there was, I don't know, about 100, 200,000 or so in cash that came to her. And she had this brilliant realization. She goes, I woke up the next morning and I'm still the same person with the same thoughts. And it's almost like I'm still the same person with the same crappy thoughts, or I'm still the same person with the same awesome thoughts that she has already developed a practice of appreciating herself and celebrating herself and enjoying life at each step of the way. Sometimes you have little celebrations, sometimes you have big ones, but it is a muscle that she's developed. So by the time that the money got there, it wasn't such a big deal. It was a wonderful thing. Actually, we just passed Mother's Day recently. I had a conversation with a friend because I said, I feel celebrated and appreciate as a mom and as a woman every day. Mm -hmm. And that started with me feeling this for myself so that that everybody around me could do the same. So she said, yeah, so why celebrate Mother's Day at all? Like my my husband and I, we really don't. It's kind of a stupid holiday. And I was like, that just gives me an opportunity to reflect on how I've been celebrating it all of this time and all of the ways that it counted for me in the moment. The day before Mother's Day, I really needed a lot of integration self-care time. And my husband took the kids for like four hours. And I told him, this is the greatest gift you give. You didn't wait the next day till you had something planned. You gave it to me when it mattered. And I gave myself permission to take it when it mattered. So I do feel like 
having an active practice of not just looking for ways to be grateful for what's happening, but to take it one step further and to actually say, what can I celebrate in my life today? And I feel like it adds this spark to your life. Um, I know I'll keep talking, but I'm so excited about this. Oh, I love it too. I'm hoping that that I had a a really, really popular post that went viral and it was really simple. I was in my house. I had kind of a crappy day and (laughs) nothing really went great. And I was just sitting there. I was still in my workout clothes, but I hadn't worked out. I tried to do a bunch of stuff for my business. Didn't work out. My kids were whining, blah, blah, whatever it was. And I posted this post where I got a nice bottle of champagne and said, I'm opening this just because, because I want to be in a celebratory state. I have nothing to celebrate. If anything, today has gone completely off the rails, but I'm just going to stake a claim in life and say life even now. (laughs) It went totally viral because people were so attracted to this idea of, you know, not putting off, you know, how many women say their best underwear and their undergarments for Sunday (laughs) or their best lipstick or their best perfume. Well, guess what? That day may not come or if it does come, you, you, how much practice have you had really owning this yeah. as a fabric of your life, as, right. a, as your own imprint into your soul, right? And again, I feel like as a business owner, when you show up, if you're not at your A game, what's the point of doing it? Right. Really? Yeah. What's the point of being mediocre? I feel like as entrepreneurs, you could really think of this act of celebration as a radical investment into your business and into yourself. I agree. I 100% agree. This is exciting. You know, um, just you talking about this, this makes me want to, all these thoughts start going through my mind. I'm like, okay, (laughs) why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And I agree with you. Like the things that we have, my parents, I grew up with them like saving their furniture, leaving the plastic on it, all this stuff. And I'm like, I use everything I have everything out, my best. I wear my favorite jewelry all the time. Why not? You know, and, and that, it makes me feel good when I'm, you know, when you, when you do those things for yourself, you feel good. So it creates a better day every single yeah. day. And yeah, I, I, I you. you know, it's the one visual that I like to use is let's say you're starting at the bottom of the mountain, right? Mm-hmm. What, what do you see at the bottom of the mountain? Well, all you see is the mountain <laughs> in front of you. you know, right. You, you, know, you could look, turn around and see that the flat, you know, Uh, path there but you really don't get much of a a bird's eye view or any scenery you kind of so what most people are doing they're saying when I get to the top of the mountain I'm going to celebrate so they keep their nose down they keep their nose to the grindstone just going to but I feel like most of the enjoyment some of the greatest views and experiences and vistas and magic and the birds flying by and the clouds being this way happen on your way there. You're totally right. And so Absolutely. what you're talking about is when you have your eyes open and you give yourself permission to do little acts of um, pleasure yeah. and, and feeling good, right? To put on your favorite earrings. I feel like that's taken in that scenery, what's mm-hmm. available to you today. Right. And what happens is that life says, yes, I see this. I feel this. Here's more. Mm-hmm. Here's more. Here's more. And this is when you talk about in manifestation or in law of attraction. Well, this is the biggest question I get. Lana, I get what you're saying. I want to feel X, Y, Z. I want to feel worthy. I want to feel deserving. I want to feel loving. I want to feel successful, but I've never felt it. So how the hell am I supposed to start feeling it now? Yeah. Right? It's like, yeah. you, you want me to imagine it, but I've never lived it. I don't know anybody who lives it. You know, a question for entrepreneurs would be, I want to, you know, earn six figures or seven figures and work less and have more free time, but nobody around me is doing that. I've never seen it. I don't believe it's possible. How the hell do I sit there and imagine it? Well, it is not my lived experience or my belief, right? Yeah, I want to know. (laughs) It is the one step at a time. It is, what can you do today? That's why I created the four minute ease meditation that I'm sure you'll have a link to somewhere. It's like the four minutes that you are giving yourself today to feel an ease. And next day, it might grow to five. And the next day, it might grow to six. And that is that little uh, by little movement forward that allows you to develop that muscle before, you know, there's a story that uh, Jerry Hicks used to tell that I love of the farmer and the calf. The farmer would lift the calf over the fence to the pasture every okay. single day. And at the end of a year, he was lifting a full grown bull. Holy With moly. The same ease. <laughs> as he had been lifting the calf. Why? He did it every day, little by little. The calf got bigger, the farmer got stronger. 
right? Wow. So most people will look at someone like me and say, well, Anna, you're you're just, you must have been born lucky. You must have, you know, you didn't leave, live struggles. Sure, now you live in your mansion and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, nah, I've been lifting the calf every day. I was, I did not, even if I was born with this handed to me, this would have still had to be a practice. But I grew up in Siberia with nothing. You know, I had to create my life from scratch. I did not grow up with relationships that were full of love and affection. And this is something I've got to create it from scratch. But how? one little step at a time. So what can you do today, today, not tomorrow, not next year, not when you achieve that big thing and you finally feel deserving of your own love and celebration. What can you do today to enjoy your life a little more? And I feel like enjoyment is this, um, you know, in a, in a society that isn't, um, hugely focused on pleasure and enjoyment in some ways that there's a religious connotation, you know, the sin of being gluttonous or uh, being enjoying sex or being really, um, uh, I guess in some way celebrating and boasting what you are experiencing. We are taught to play small, right? right? We are taught to like, yeah, I don't, don't totally you know, like, don't share too much. Don't count your chickens before they get hatch. Oh, the, the other shoe is going to drop or mm -hmm. don't make this person feel uncomfortable, especially as women. So here we are playing small, but we want a big life. Yeah. So guess what? A small person can't smell, can't get a whiff of a big life, even if it was right in front of them. They are not a vibrational match to it. So how do you get bigger? You allow yourself to enjoy your life little by little, to pause, to celebrate, to appreciate, to make it an active, an active part of your life, not just something you do once in a while when you think right. you deserved it. So do you have like one example, like do you have with your, the people that you work with that you bring up a lot? Like people are like, I can't think of anything. My life sucks. I can't think of anything. You know, you know I, you think I think that the two big ones are love and money. Okay. Health as well yeah. uh, is an important one. Oh my gosh. Um, yes. All right. I mean, there's so many ways. So, I mean, I'm, I'm like, I don't know, which one do you want to pick? I'll let you pick health, money, yeah, yeah, or love. Yeah. You tell me yeah. and I'll give you an example. Yeah. I, I think health and we take that so for granted. My husband just had surgery um, on his back. So when I thought, when he was thinking about, you know, you don't realize that you appreciate something so much until it's gone and yeah. then you appreciate it. So yes. health, that yeah. would be the health one. Health is a big right? one. And I feel like it goes two ways. One is you either take it for granted because you nothing kind of wrong, right? You have it. And yeah. so the value of contrast, I think it's, I have, um, a really, um, honoring relationship with challenges and with contrast because okay. they bring me the clarity that I didn't have before. So your husband might've had the help, but after this, he has it and appreciates it. Oh yeah. And the good day that he has now, he is like, life, right. That's a whole yes. different quality of life to yes. live that way. So to welcome when challenges happen and to realize that they're there to bring you. That's why I say stretching celebration. I start to stretch it when I get in a car accident. I, I had a car accident, a bumper, bump, uh, what do you call it? Um, when you bump somebody. Fender, uh, yeah, fender uh, bender. The ben, fender bender. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah um, I think somebody bumped me, actually. This was maybe like seven years ago. Um, and uh, no, I think my kids were just about a year. So maybe uh, five years ago. And I remember thinking for a moment, like all these thoughts went through my head. Oh my God, how could this be happening? I was running late to an appointment. Like, oh no. And all of a sudden I just took a deep breath. And I said, I, I know this is going to serve me. Yeah. I know this is going to serve me. And I'm just going to, I say, color it good. When you can ascribe something yeah. good to life, you can derive it from it. Yeah. And so I colored it good. I take, took a minute to compose myself before I walk out of the car. I was already looking for the gift. I ended up having the most amazing interaction with this woman who ended up giving me um, information that I've been looking for for about six months for something for my business. Mm -hmm. no, there was no damage done. There was no, it was a totally minor thing, but I could receive the gift. It could have easily gone the other way. Yeah. And life is a series of these sliding doors kind of moments. Right. How are you, how you show up is what you will receive. And that will determine the rest of the day, the rest of the week, the rest of the month, the rest of the year. So we have millions of parallel realities that we could be living. I say, choose the one that feels best. And most people don't realize that they have the freedom to oh, yes. write whatever script they want. 
for what's happening in their life and to really choose how they approach a situation. Mm -hmm. So the freedom of choosing the perspective that feels best. So for health, where challenges happen is somebody with a chronic condition, right? Or some, some kind of pain. And at the moment when they're experiencing the most discomfort is when, of course, they're launching desires and saying, I want to feel good. Mm -hmm. But they are not a vibrational match to feeling good because they're writing old momentum that they didn't notice that got worse and worse and worse. How do you get to cancer? Years of pain, yes. yep. years of emotional. How do you get to a heart attack? Years yeah. of emotional, right? It's just that we weren't sensitive enough to notice those mm -hmm. signs along the way. So big bang happens. Something mm -hmm. awful happens. Yeah. You launch desires for something better, but at the same time, you are very clearly in the discomfort of the situation, right? So how do you feel into something that will take you out of it while you are so strongly experiencing it? And a lot of times people say, I can't even meditate. I can't even do anything because the pain in my body is so strong in that moment, for example. Well, this is when I say, listen, you're trying to lift a bull before oh, you've lifted yeah. a calf for a year. I mean, yeah. really? Good luck. No, but not even the farmer, not even uh, me, not even some, somebody who's been doing this for a long time could lift it if they hadn't been practicing it all along. Mm -hmm. So how can you feel a little better today? There it goes back to step yeah. one and step one and step one, one step at a time. How can you feel a little better? And a lot of times they'll say, well, I feel better when I am out at the beach. Okay, well, why don't you go to the beach? Oh, I can't go to the beach. I got too many things to do. I got too many priorities. And my question back to them is, well, how much? It's like, I don't have time to feel good. And my question to them is, how much time do you have to feel bad? Ugh. Because that's what's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. You're right. just going to keep. So it's a matter of permission, mm -hmm. giving ourselves permission to everybody knows at least one way that they could feel better right now. Yes, no, absolutely. Don't tell me you don't know. Yeah. It's just that you're not willing to give yourself permission because you have a bunch of shoulds. A lot of times it's prioritizing other things above your well-being. It's that delayed gratification. You think that if you do this, if you fulfill your kids' needs, your partner's needs, somebody else's, whatever you've committed to, it, you know, Alana, I got to work to make money to da, 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 da. And I'm like, yeah, but I promise you, when you're sitting in that hospital bed and you're oh, not working yeah. anyway... Yeah. You're going to look back and say, damn, yeah, I could have, I could have done some things different. And it wasn't worth it. All that other stuff was it. not worth it. I mean, no. oh, yeah. Right. Yes. And so I, I also feel like there's an opportunity to learn from other people's examples. Like I've had generally good health for most of my life. I've had some, uh, uh, you know, uh, with pregnancies and with births and all that. Those have been my times of most like body discomfort, yes. you know, that I've had. And then I had surgery for mastitis, which actually is a really good example. I had this amazing twin home birth at, you know, born 33 hours apart at home. It was an incredible feat in many ways of lifting a bull that I've been lifting the calf every day. So by the time it was time to birth twins at home with a midwife, I did it and I did it gracefully and victoriously and beautifully. And there was a lot to celebrate every step of the way and there, but I actually reached a point where I had lifted too much. And as soon as the kids were out and I had to nurse them and take care of them, all of these survival instincts kicked in that I didn't even know I had. And I worked myself into the ground trying to nurse them and not giving them formula. And I was not sleeping. I mean, I completely burnt myself out to the point where there were lots of signs early on that I didn't listen. And I ended up with mastitis for the first time in my life in a hospital. And I had saved up all this milk that I want to see. I told myself the kids shouldn't need formula. I have the capacity in my body. I was overriding my ways oh to feel better by saying, yeah. but they need it. Somebody mm -hmm. needs it. I'm a bad mom if I don't nurse my kids. This will overpower. But guess what? All of the milk that I had pumped and saved by the time I was in the hospital, in four hours, they ran out of all the milk. And I ended, oh up, being my gosh. I ended up being in the hospital for four days without seeing my seven-week-old newborns. Wow. Because they thought I had the strain-resistant thing, and they were so little anyway, I didn't want them in the hospital. So I had been trying to avoid this big disaster, but anything that we resist persists. Right. So I had been, Michael Beckwith has this great saying that you are pushed by fear until you're pulled by a vision, or you're pushed by pain until you're pulled by a vision. And it is really an art to recognize, hey, 
I don't want to be feeling this anymore. There's got to be a better way. Let me feel into what the better way is. No, most of us have experienced some sort of contrast or pain to get us to the clarity. But mm -hmm. most people stay in that even way beyond that expiration date and keep regurgitating and circulating and adding momentum to more pain instead of saying, what is the vision of what I want? Now, as soon as I was in that hospital, everything changed for me because I realized, what am I doing? I'm running myself into the ground. The kids need a sane mother, yeah. not some to be nursed. They yeah. need me, my presence, my love. I was resenting them. I was repeating all these familial patterns that I didn't want to be repeating. So I feel like it was um, coming to that moment of truth of saying something's got to shift. And it was hard for me when we didn't have money to hire help. I, I, for the first time in my life, received uh, help from a friend, never borrowed money from a friend, never, like I had to really allow myself to receive a lot of support that was very humbling for someone like me, but it, it was because I was pulled by a vision. There's got to be an easier way and I'm open to receiving it in any way that it comes. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I love it. So, oh, I just, I, yeah. This is like going to, I went to celebrate um, your life in, at um, Scottsdale last fall. And this feels like I'm just listening to one of the conference speakers. You're amazing. So I love this celebration and how we're going to, you're helping us to find that way to celebrating the moments. And I really appreciate that. Um, do you have something that you offer to help people you know, along with this, that would make it easier for them to find that, that sweet spot, that place where they can celebrate a little bit every day. I think you said you had some kind of meditation or something. Yeah, I have the four minute ease meditation. Okay. And it's the reason it's four minutes is because it's the shortest meditation that I could create. And I created it when my twins were so young that I could literally, wow. I created it for myself originally. Then I went and recorded a professional version of it mm -hmm. because there was nothing out there that I saw where I could close the door to the bathroom and have my four minutes. <laughs> you know, like it, everybody's got four minutes. Yes, if you're right. who you are. Right. If Oprah and, <laughs> yes. and, and um, you know, Richard Branson can make five minutes in their day, so can you. Yes. And, and I feel like there's this Zen saying that if um, uh, meditate 20 minutes a day, and if you're busy and overwhelmed, meditate one hour a day, right? Okay. So it seems very counterintuitive. But what that saying is saying is that when you change the way you look at things, the Wayne Dyer saying, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. When you allow yourself to go to a different perspective, you actually in my belief, literally enter a different reality. You draw out different conversations out of different people. When you are in alignment, you happen to call people at the right moment when they're available and they're willing to say yes to whatever you want. When you are in alignment, you're able to receive the inspiration and the idea that ends up leading to some sort of success for you or some sort of outcome that you've been wanting. You are more in receptive mode to receive what actually matches what you desire. When you're out of alignment, you can't hear it. The volume's way down right. on your own intuition and your own clarity. So it's almost like you're in the dark, just fumbling around, right? Yeah. So I feel like um, doing a, a meditation, and the reason I, I talk about meditation, but there's so many, in my Mastery Life Academy, we spent a, a, a whole month on foundational practices because I don't feel like meditation is the only one, especially people who have had yeah. um, post-traumatic stress and traditional forms of meditation of watching your breath or even mantra meditation mm -hmm. can be very re-triggering and mm -hmm. challenging. Right. So I create a meditation that's completely guided. I okay. basically speak almost the whole time, which some people love, some people don't love, because it'll, and I'm guiding you towards the states. And I'm asking you the questions so that you can answer them for yourself. And in the ease meditation, we say, zoom out of the course of your life and think back like how, Things seem so big and so important at one time, and now they really don't. You've got these oh ups and gosh, downs and yes. sideways. To have the ability to zoom out and rise above or right. go below, however you want to describe, so that all of this, like the ocean, there's waves at the surface. There might be storms, but deep below it is steady, mm -hmm. right? It is grounded. It is it's connected to well-being. And so I feel like the ease meditation is the shortest thing. And actually, as a part of the ease meditation, 
which is a second gift that you get, I believe on the second day is yeah. my I am worthy meditation. And I call it an affirmation meditation where I repeat a series of affirmations for you to feel more worthy and deserving. So Love that might it. resonate um, with some people here as well, because I feel like it is about retraining your mind. Mm -hmm. Like I said, why don't you do the things that make you feel good? You're not giving yourself yeah. permission. And a lot of times these um, challenges happen in our lives so that we can give ourselves permission finally to do what we actually have felt drawn to do, but didn't allow ourselves. Yeah. And guess what? The world doesn't end. Like the people around you don't all of a sudden think you're selfish X, Y, Z and mm -hmm. never want to talk to you or whatever it is, these scenarios that we have frankly, because we have examples from our parents or other people that were self-sacrificing. And, but I, 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 this is what I ask people. And this is a tough question to ask. I say, okay, so when you're telling this to yourself, whose voice do you hear your mom or your dad or your grandmother, or who are you repeating? And they'll frequently say one family member. And I say, do you want to be like that person? Oh my God. They're like, no. And I'm like, well, then if you want to live different, you got to do different. Right. Like, this is only going to get you to the same result. Yep. Totally. Right? Yes. So yes, well, there's practices of, you know, um, uh, in, in the Mastery Life Academy, which is my signature big program. Mm -hmm. You know, I really break it down how to approach um, envisioning, feeling into, appreciating, experiencing what you want and celebrating what you have yes. so that you can create this new reality day by day. And people look back on two months, three months, four months, I have these crazy testimonials because they lifted a little bit each day or they walked a little bit each day before they know it, they are uh, at this top of this mountain. Then they realize there's still so much more to go because the more, you know, the more you realize there yeah, is, right, right? Right. <laughs> but that's the exciting part. You realize at some point that you are forever going to evolve and grow and expand, but you can be enjoying each part of the journey. So you're not in a rush to get somewhere. Right. I love that. Okay. Well, I'm going to link, um, to that offer for the readers and the listeners. So we'll have a link so that they can get that offer immediately because yeah. I know this is going to help them. And, um, where else can they find you? Uh, you have a website. Can yes. yes. LanaSchlafer.com. Okay. And, uh, you can read lots of blogs and I have Lana TV episodes, which I are love those shows. by the way. <laughs> So yeah. you can check those out. I am um, going to be releasing the self-love course. I have a course on ease and I have a self-love course that I am about to release. I don't know when yet. Um, and that's going to be another kind of foundational course, if you will, but a mini one. It's just going to be a few weeks so that you can start to feel and build that foundation of self-worth and deserving and being in a space of self-appreciation and self-celebration. Actually, in the self-love course, week one is self-worth, week two is self-care, week three is self-celebration. And I kind of redefine those a little bit in my own way, but I feel like those are all important elements of what self-love in practice actually looks like. It's not just like getting a massage or getting yourself flowers, which is what kind of most people, you know, associate. Yeah, right, right. It's way deeper. It's like, can you love yourself and hold your own hand? There's actually one part of the self-love course. I'm just in the middle of uh, creating it. So there's one part where I say, can you look back on yourself as a child and have compassion for what you went through? And the exercise is actually to hug yourself for a minute. So just sit there. And if there's something tangible that starts to happen, let's do it right now for those people that are watching. Let's do it together, Melissa. Okay. Why don't you just hug yourself and imagine that you're hugging the, the little girl or the little boy inside of you and you are just holding them and you are, I mean, I want to cry every time I do this extra. It's, it's so meaningful, just mm -hmm. comforting your own self and saying things like, it's all right mm -hmm. and I've got you. I've got you like something so simple. Like I am here with you. You know, that, That's that to me is, is, is a big part. Can you be with yourself when it is challenging? Anybody can be with themselves when it's all shiny and yeah. happy, but yeah. can you hold your own hand in the middle of you feeling that you, um, done something wrong or something has gone wrong or somebody's hurt you? Why do people feel abandoned? Because they've abandoned themselves. Right. And that person 
just triggered that abandonment that they already they're they've already abandoned the 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 child within mm -hmm. and somebody else comes and does it it's a lot harder <laughs> to ignore mm -hmm. it at that point right so mm -hmm. again i feel like any area of life that matters to you life is waiting for your command it is saying you set the tone i will deliver it to you with manifestations most people are saying, give me the manifestation, then I'll feel it. Uh, give me the million dollars, I'll feel wealthy. <laughs> give me the lover, I'll feel loved. You know, give me whatever, I'll feel successful. When life is waiting for your command, it's not the other way around. It's like looking at the mirror and frowning and expecting it to smile back at you. That is not the way a mirror works. Right. It's just going to mirror back to you whatever yes, you're doing. Exactly. So, oh my gosh, that's such a great way to, to say it. It's amazing. So to give yourself permission to actually set the tone for your day, for mm -hmm. your life, that's kind of what all my work's about. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for, you know, helping us all just see this more clearly, see that mirror. Thank you. So everybody, uh, please visit Lana Schlafer. I love you. It's like lanaschlafer.com, right? Yes, lanaschlafer.com. You are amazing. Thank you so much for being on this show. We really appreciate it. And I cannot wait to see your cover photo. You are beautiful. It's my first cover. Oh, really? Yeah, I think oh, so. Oh, I'm I'm That's great. <laughs> I'm like, really? I would have thought you would have been on many of them because you are just an amazing No, I've dynamic. been published, but never on the cover. So this is exciting for me. This, this is definitely something I'm pre-celebrating. I'll be celebrating. I will be announcing <laughs> it everywhere and post-celebrating. I'm going to spread awesome. this out for like the next two months. Yay. I love it. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, thanks so much. That really makes my day too. And I will talk to you again soon. Okay. Take care.